Well hello, welcome to the studio. Today, something a little bit different again. Today it's Seascape Challenge. Um, I was watching a lovely painting being done by another artist on YouTube called Master Dan Temple, and he did a fabulous painting, and I mentioned in the comments underneath that maybe he should have a go at trying to paint a seascape in about half an hour. Dan, you're an absolute superstar. You actually did a fantastic little seascape. I think it was much over about 20 minutes, if I'm right. So I thought, gosh, if Dan can do it, maybe I should have a try as well, because I wouldn't expect you to do something that I wouldn't have a go at as well. So here's my canvas. I got it all set up. The only things I've done to it is to put a little bit of liquid clear onto it, and I put a little bit of colour on there, but you'll see what that turns out to be in a moment. So without further ado, I have my little stopwatch back there all set up, and yes, it's got a battery in it. And let's see if I can do this in 20 minutes. Now this is a one take, no interruptions, no voiceovers, no editing. So whatever happens, happens. Dogs barking, engines revving, fire engines, whatever. It'll all be in the, the soundtrack. So let's get cracking with it. Now, just quickly show you my palette. So here's the gray color I mixed up. I used Van Dyke Brown and Prussian Blue. And I put a little bit of that onto the canvas. So I've given away some of the colors already. But I've got some titanium white and I've got a little bit of Indian yellow. And those are the only colors I'm going to use. The other things I'm going to be using are some Bob Ross brushes, of course. They're one of my, my favourite things to use. And the very first thing I want to do is to establish where I think I might want maybe a bit of a, a bit of a bright spot in my sky. So I'm going to go straight into my titanium white. Maybe just get, ooh, I don't know, just a hair of Indian yellow. I just want to warm that colour up a little bit. I think up here I'm just going to have a little bit of a glow in my sky. Now we can see that. This is a little bit of an experiment because I've never painted this colour on a canvas before. I've never used Indian yellow and I've never used these nice grey colours together before. So it's a bit of an experiment. But I'm rather hoping I'm going to get a nice sort of steely grey colour out of it. Maybe with a little hint of green possibly. So there we go. Ooh. You didn't tell me to start the clock. <laughs> This is it folks, totally unedited. Okay, I'll knock off a couple of minutes at the end there. If I, if I, if I goof this completely, it's okay. I will take a little bit off. So I'm just gonna go for a nice, a nice glow in the sky. There we go. And, and spend just a few moments. When you're doing this on your own paintings, and of course you're gonna be doing the 20 minute challenge, aren't you? Of course you are. Um, when you do this on your own paintings, always take time to, to really blend your skies. There is nothing worse than, than rushing through a section of your painting and you get some really nice effects happening later on and then you spot the background sky is a little bit choppy or it's not as nice as it should have been and you could have spent two moments waiting and doing a little bit more. I think, I think it's going to be a little bit of a, a, bit of a moonlit scene here. What I'm doing here is I'm desperately trying to get this to look round and not the shape of a foot, rugby football. For our American viewers, rugby is a game played by men with strange shape. That's a very English joke, I'm afraid. Okay, so I've got a little bit of a moon in there and I just softened it down a little bit. Gosh, I've already had two minutes of my allotted time. Now then, let's get into a little bit more of this white Indian yellow. And I'm just going to put a little bit on my brush. Now here's a neat little trick for you. If you, if you haven't got pins and all that uh, lined up in advance here, you can actually use a fan brush. And this is something you may have seen before, but I use my finger like a peg and I just measure up the canvas here maybe maybe a little bit lower than halfway, and just turn the brush on its side. Just touch the canvas, and you just notice I'm just letting my finger rest on the bottom edge of the canvas. I just slide it along. And that'll get me a pretty good horizon line without using a piece of tape. Right, so now I know where my sky is, and I know where the sea is going to be, because this is a seascape challenge. 
So I'm going to put a little bit more paint on my brush. There we go. Now, think about that moonlight casting a nice bright light. I think it's going to cast a light over some nice little, little clouds in my sky. And always think about the brightest edge facing towards the moon. There we go. Now there is a reason that these little seascape challenges and little quick paintings actually, actually more valuable than just kind of having fun. And that's because very often when we're painting, we can sometimes just sit on a painting just too long. We can just sit there working away at it slavishly, trying to make it work out and getting ourselves in more of a pickle than if we had just done it more quickly. And it's a little piece of advice I was given a long time ago by a wonderful artist called Daryl Club, one of the Bob Ross instructors, and he just said, when I asked him, I said, how comes you make painting look so effortless? And he, and he smiled and just said, I paint like I don't care. And I realized actually afterwards that he painted with such ease that he did make it look easy because it, he, just, he just let the brush do the work and he didn't overwork it. So I just painted a crazy cloud on there and it took me probably less than a minute. And that's how I paint. This would be how I would paint if I didn't have to stop and video things a little more. I would probably take a lot less time to do stuff because I want that lovely sort of instantaneous sort of effect. Just notice how I'm sort of just scrubbing this paint in here. I'm not really worrying too much about it too much. I'm just going to let the brush do its thing. Good, bad or otherwise. It'll just do its thing. I am just going to let it play. Now, I'm back to my nice one inch brush that I was blending with, and I'm going to blend with just the corners of my brush. Whew, look at that. I got windows open in here, so if you see my little backdrop flip flapping around, it's because I got just a hint of a cool breeze. I'm going to take that as being no breeze at all, actually. So it's actually roasting in here, but. I'm only here for 20 minutes. I can do that, can't I? As in fact, it's quite funny painting this way because when my other half, Terry and I, started out as Bob Ross instructors many moons ago, we used to do a lot of craft shows. Those are sort of one and two day shows through the summer months. And invariably, we would be painting in a marquee somewhere in a blazing heat, absolutely roasting us. And this is something of a, a kind of like a little throwback to those days. Painting in red hot conditions, it's kind of almost like serendipity that I'm painting again for you in roasting hot conditions. I'm just going to load a little more paint in my brush now. Have a look at that colour. That is anything but white. There's another little top tip for you. I don't use white paint until I absolutely must. And I might come back and tickle this up a little bit and do a little bit more with it. But right now, I'm just looking for shades of greys and maybe a little hint of yellow here and there. Now, let's think about a nice diagonal. I want my, the eye of my wave to be somewhere here. So imagine that line through there. Let's make a little mark, okay. Now, don't get it too close to the right nor too close to the left. You want it to be just a little right of center, okay? If it's dead center, then you'll end up with this kind of like, sort of a climax to the wave will be right here, and then there'll be nothing much happening at the sides to take your eye. So I always try and get a little off center, and you definitely don't want the peak of the wave too far right, because then you'll have a, a big empty space over here not doing very much. So I try and move it around a little bit. So I'm gonna maybe even move that back a little tiny bit more. Now, this is a shape for seascape artists, that if you struggle to paint a seascape, think about this shape. This is a bit of a classic shape here I'm going to do for you. There you go, little rub that little mistake out. Okay, and I always think of this, first time I saw it, I always thought how it looked just like a saddle for a horse. Okay, so the horse would be in here, 
and this would be the back of the horse and this would be where my wave crashes over. So I, I always saw this lovely rolling shape. Now if I don't like what I've done here, I can pick up my old brush again. I can, I can move it. I got time. I got 14 whole minutes left. So there you go. Now then, let's put that little mark in again. There, I moved a little further to the right. Okay. I'm going to try and get a nice angle to that. Okay, and let's put in some little bits of background C. Again, it's the same little grubby colour. Think about the line to the eye of the wave. I think that my brightest part of my seascape is going to be right about in here. Just touch, touch, touch. Yeah, there we go. And I'm just, I'm just touching with the edge of the knife and just literally letting it touch, bounce along. Not doing too much with it again. I'm going to try and save our energy for the main finale of the wave. Yeah, there we go. There we go. Now obviously, I'm doing this a little bit of speed. If you're painting along with me, take your time. You don't have to be doing it this quickly. Now I'm going to just pick up a clean fan brush here. I just want to soften that effect a little. And just as quick as that, we have some background C. Again, if I get a chance, I might come back and play with that a little more. Now then, I want to get this area here. It's going to be the, the eye of my wave. Now, it's strange on camera, that looks kind of like it's sort of almost quite flat. It's actually quite steep. Okay. Indian yellow, titanium white again. I want a little bit more green in there maybe, so I use a little bit more Indian yellow on my finger. There we go, look at that. Look at that, wow. Isn't that just lovely? Now, I know for some of you, You've watched my videos before. You all know that I like using my fingers to paint. I, I've been a finger painter for as long as I can remember. And if it's not your thing, it's fine, absolutely fine. Use a brush instead. But I've just gotten so used to using my hands to paint, to correct my work, to demonstrate things, that I've kind of gotten used to using my hands to paint with a lot. So one of those things, you either like it or you don't. And again, I'm going to blend this out. I'm going to use just a few hairs on the corner of my brush and start at the crest of the wave where you really want to be brightest and start working away. So you want to work away from that. You never want to work down here and then go back to the top again. Ah, that's a world of hurt there. And knock off the excess paint as you go. I'll stress that enough and then I'm going to use my brush. Now it's got a little colour on it but nothing nothing too heavy. And I'm just going to give that a little flick. Just press and pull. And you see it kind of creates like a little sort of curl in the wave. Now angles are all important for seascapes. Because the angle in here is steep and rising. The angle over here is a little flatter, and by the time it comes over here, well, the wave's kind of lazy. It hasn't really kind of gotten to the top yet. So do these angles and just be a little bit careful not to overdo it and not to make them too upright. Sometimes folk seem to forget that this has got a curve to it and, and, and all the angles seem to be going kind of straight like that and sort of straight up and kind of really doesn't look as good as it could. A little bit of something to get you going. Now then, a little white. I think I'm going to dull this down. I've got just a little bit of this colour here going still. Maybe I'll just 
I'll just mix it up on this area. See how that picks up the colour then. Tones it right down. Okay. And I'm going to pick up a little roll of this paint. Nothing too right here. I want to think about, about the, the shape of my waves. And I'm going to use my palette knife this time. I just want to kind of zigzag this in. And it's going to kind of drag it down the face of my wave. Yeah. Remember those angles. These are a little bit more of a curve in here. Yeah. I'll play with that again in a second. Small blade of my knife. Yeah, that's it. So these angles here is a little bit sort of softer. And over here, even softer still. So you can see how I've got these angles working for me here. Now you can do this with a fan brush, with a liner brush. I just happened to pick up my palette knife. I thought that'll work great. So I'm just going to do some nice kind of effects here. temperature outside right now is about 31 or 32 degrees so it's pretty darn warm. Now I'm gonna get my fan brush in here and just curl some of these around a little bit. Yeah that's um, yeah curve that round. There we go. Now if you can do this this way, you can change your mind and do it a different way if you wish to. It's up to you, up to you what you decide to do. As Bob would often say, it's your world. You paint how you want your painting to look. I don't really like that very much. It's, it looked better in my head. <laughs> do you ever have one of those moments to think, boy, that looked better in my head than it actually came out? my canvas because that's one of the things my little chat my little channel is I kind of getting known for now it's me making mistakes isn't it and kind of goofing things up and then showing you how I fix things so why not see it in real time as I said that looked a lot nicer in my head than it came out Gosh, I've only got six minutes left. I gotta get a palm tree in here yet, and I gotta paint a cabana on a beach, I gotta put a headland in. That's okay folks, I'll get it all done. And again, just sweep it round. Yeah, it looks a little bit nicer, doesn't it? It's a little bit strange before. Now, I think the light through here is going to be getting a little brighter. So here's where I'm going to use a little bit more kind of bright color on the beach. Again, paint it like you don't care. But think about those angles. You can work high to low, but you can't use the palette knife and go the other way around. You can't work from low to high. Nothing happens, but you can work the other direction. Okay, so keep that in mind. And I'm just going to grab this little back edge, just flick it back into my wave. Now this and this are in very different places. This is a lot further back than it is on the beach here. So you want to come back with flat strokes, flat strokes. Okay, and this has to come round and then flatten out. Now then, I have to do something here about getting my, my little cascade coming over the top of my wave here. And this is where you need to be a 
a little brave. Indian yellow. My colour's getting quite golden now, isn't it? And then take it through. Okay. Now think about coming across the top of here, and you're, you're looking at this as like it's coming off of here with some speed. It's kind of crashing over. So you're going to come along here, press, push, and then just let your hand fall. You let gravity do the work. You don't need to do anything. You just let gravity take your hand. Yeah, there we go. And again, press and push and push and push. So you're just letting your hand be guided by gravity. That's a little bright through there, isn't it? I'm going to just tone that down just a hair. There we go. Let's add a little bit of me splash and crash and get in the corner of the brush here. I tried to save a little bit of a shadow line in there. I call it a little mascara line. And again, I'm just pushing with the corner of my fan brush. Push, push, push. Let the paint just explode off the top edge of that wave. Ooh, look at that. Wow, I like that little drop there. Who's that coming through the door? That's Poppy Cat. All those little tiny times you hear those little noises in the background, it's, it's one of the little babies usually coming in to find out where we're at and is dinner ready yet. That's uh, the main reason they come back is to get dinner. Okay, now the other little tip I'm going to give you here in this one I've mentioned before is the brushes like to be led, they like to be taken, they don't like to be pushed. Brushes that are pushed are a bit like people. You push some around, they, they generally push back. So you lead your brushes across the canvas here. Okay. I have to get a little bit of a wiggle on here, folks, because I only have two minutes left. Something back in here a little bit. Looks a little bit blank in there, doesn't it? Maybe a little bit of something in here, maybe as well. Okay. Again, I'm going to blend the back of this, but I want to leave all these little bits of detail in here. Leave all that lovely motion and movement. Ooh, it's a ticklish bit. It's just the inside edge of that wave. I should probably use a filbert brush for this, but hey, that means changing brushes and I haven't got time. There we go, it's a nice little rolling wave. Let's finish off my little bit of beach through here. I pick up my fan brush and just kind of zip it along. Okay, now then, stand back and have a look at your paintings. I got 55 seconds left to make an improvement. I think I think I need the edges of my clouds to be a little bit brighter. Right in here, maybe even a little bit in here. And there you go, with 30 seconds to spare, the Seascape Challenge. It's a fun little painting. That alarm clock's going to go bing, bing, bing in a moment. But try doing some little short challenges of yourself. Set the alarm clock and maybe see if you can paint some trees in 20 minutes rather than in two hours. I think you'll get a lot more out of your paintings if you do. Anyway, less from me and more painting from you in future. Happy painting, people. Told you it was going to go off. <laughs>